Hello and welcome to Whiteboard. Our guest today is someone who I don't know. In fact, I did not even know that he existed as, as an astrologer. And about two months back, I happened to see him speak on an astrological topic on a channel other than his own. And then I was so hooked on his astrology that every alternate day, I have made it a point to watch one video from his YouTube channel. He has got more than 365 videos on his channel and each video is quite a gem. So he's got more than 365 videos on his channel. I've probably in the last two months watched somewhere about 30 or 40 of his videos and I cannot seem to get enough of it. <laughs> so our guest today is Babajit Kalita, whose, whose YouTube channel is called Exotic Astrology. And I can, I can assure you, his astrology is quite exotic. It's quite hooking. Not only the content is hooking, but he himself is quite hooking. He, I think, must be about, my guest, he has not told me because I don't know him. He must be about 27, 28 or thereabouts. 25. Oh, 25. Okay. So yes. I did think you looked, looked much younger than 28, but my guess was, you are about that age. Things are a college in Tamil Nadu near Chennai near Kanchipuram because I've seen your Kanchipuram video. So you said your college uh, in Tamil Nadu was near Kanchipuram. And now he's studying his master's, uh, completing or about to complete his master's degree in engineering from uh, a university. I don't know the name of the university. Gotting, Gottingen University, Germany. Uh, okay, so that, that university, I don't know the German name, in Germany. And uh, he's also an eligible bachelor. His parents are looking for a bride for him. He, he himself doesn't have any girlfriends except one who, who, who he speaks to only if she speaks with him. Oh, you know, oh, he is, recorded is, that also. This is, this is all from your video. So you've told me nothing. Okay, so this is, this is shared public information. So ladies and gentlemen, without wasting much time, I would like Babaji, I would, I've got six questions for you, Babaji. And these are questions which I definitely would like an answer. It's not as if I have some questions for which I know the answer and I'm asking you those questions. These are questions I think which every student of astrology uh, would like to know. And I think these are very important questions of astrology and I would like to delve into your to find out some answers. So my first question, Babajit, is about fate and free will. Do we have free will at all? Is everything linked to fate? And if we have free will, that means we can change the course of action from what is in our fate, which means astrology should not work. So either astrology works, and that means it's all controlled by our karma, or we have free will, in which case astrology should not work. So what is, a, what is your view on fate and free will? Well, before I start, I would like to thank you, first of all, for sending me the invitation. And you are yourself, as you said, you are more into KP astrology. So you are yourself a master, a master into prediction. And it's your humility that you are glorifying no, me like this. I am I, I'm, I'm a student <laughs> of astrology. And I have absolutely no hesitation in saying that what you have achieved at 25, I've been studying astrology for, you know, loosely for about... 18, 20 years, but very seriously for the last 10 years. But I think what you know about astrology is far beyond, uh, you know, my knowledge. So uh, th th that's the truth. So I would like you to continue with the question on fate and free will. Yeah. So basically, this question is a very uh, important question, which everybody has in their minds that, mm -hmm. oh, is, the, is it all destined or do we have the power to change things also? Yes. So the... Mm -hmm. If you want the answer to this question, we have to go to the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, where okay. Lord, Krishna, Lord Krishna says to Arjuna, we all know what Bhagavad Gita is. It is spoken in, the, in between of a battle where the Kurus and the Pandavas are fighting, about to fight. And then Arjuna is confused of what to do, what not to do. 
So uh, Krishna says to Arjuna that even Arjuna asks these kind of questions. Yes, what will happen here? What will happen there? What should I do here? What should I do there? And what will be the result? Yes, because most of the people are interested in the results. <laughs> yes. so, so Krishna says to Arjuna very clearly, he is very clear when he says this. He says, Gahana Karmano Gati, which means law of karma is very complex. You cannot understand. Yes. So which means that what we do is in our hands, but what results we get is not in our hands. Now there are many factors into this like lord krishna says like the gita mainly speaks of five factors which i will not go into detail now because it will take a long time but primarily the what the gita says is that we always have the free will to do what we want okay so which means that suppose uh, we uh, basically what's the birth chart the astrological kundli as we say the horoscope so horoscope is basically what it is a snapshot it's a photo of the planetary alignments and the orientations when you are born yes so which yes. Means that that will tell you who you were when you were born okay <laughs> and that okay. doesn't change so that means suppose you have a planet placed somewhere till the time you were born that mm -hmm. was the way you were mm -hmm. functioning regarding that planet and okay. that is absolutely uh, clear there's no ambiguity in that Okay. But that doesn't mean that after you are born, you have not done anything. You have done so many okay. things. Yes. Okay. So for example, I always give this uh, analogy that suppose um, there was actually they say now that it's like some people are rich, some people are poor. Yes. This, yes. You see, this is because somebody has done some good in their past lives and somebody has maybe done some bad because of which they are facing poverty since birth. Okay. But that doesn't mean that uh, since the time you were born, you don't have the power to change it. Okay. So now suppose, uh, let's take an example. Suppose your Venus is very badly placed, as many people say. So maybe your Venus is in a difficult shape. I mean, in the horoscope, in the birth chart. All right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe your seventh house has a malefic. Or maybe your uh, Venus is hemmed between two malefics or it is conjunct or either way suppose you have a vibe that your relationships don't work which happen uh, so much with people these days so then you look to the horoscope then you see oh my Venus is in Virgo it's anyways not going to work <laughs> my Venus is afflicted by Saturn it's not going to work well then we can very much ensure that we do the remedies for the planets okay so let me give you an example Suppose Venus is afflicted by Saturn here. Because when I say about the remedies, then you will understand this fate, free will, this thing much more. There comes the free will. Okay. So suppose Venus is conjunct or afflicted by Saturn. This is a very okay. famous, famous yoga or combination which we see there. And people say, Oh, I have seen a lot of tears in my relationships. <laughs> okay. So now we have to understand who is causing the problem. Yes. So if Venus is related to Saturn, that means Saturn is causing the problem. Problem or karma, whatever you call it, ultimately you are suffering. Yes, that's yes. the thing here. So yes. that means when you were born, before that, you had done something to your partners because of which, as per law of karma, you are supposed to get that back. Yes. Now, that you cannot change. But what you can change is, or what is under your control is your reaction. Yes. That is why the word responsibility is there. What is the word responsibility? It is the ability to respond. <laughs> Nothing yes. more than that. So suppose yes. suppose somebody is giving you tears. Yes, some person of the opposite sex. Then you have to make sure that you do not further uh, aggravate that karma. Yes, which means if Saturn is troubling you, do not bring Mars into the picture. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Okay. What is Mars? Why Saturn and Mars are called opposites? This has to be understood. And without that, you can't understand this. So Saturn represents tears and Mars represents the pleasure which you get, which we get when we defeat somebody or when we hit somebody. Yes. So when we take help of Mars, then Saturn will always be there on the other side. Because okay. when... When we are hitting somebody, somebody else will come and hit us. Yes. yes. So when, when somebody is giving us tears, it means that 
we have used mars or martian traits yes now because this is a video on astrology so i am speaking uh, on very technical terms mars and saturn so it is very important that <clears throat> we do not uh, cause more violence because then what happens is we are using our free will to do wrong things mm -hmm. yes and then that will have a repercussion somewhere in the future yes now the question comes of remedies the question is if at all can we do remedies and can these things be taken care of the answer is yes that is very mm -hmm. true we okay. can do remedies and we can get cleansed from the negative karma which is there because remedies are what basically and when i speak of remedies i don't mean some any tom dick and harry, rem, harry remedy which is there in india somewhere you go to some village somebody says you something no i'm not saying of those remedies i'm saying mm -hmm. of authorized bona fide remedies which are coming from the parampara traditions yes so mm -hmm. when we do, do when we do those remedies especially which is in form of mantra because uh, in kali yuga it is said see in the other four ages yes i mean uh, total there are four ages there is satya yuga yeah. There is right. yes. Then there is Dwapar Yuga. Then there is Treta yeah. Yuga, and then there is Kali Yuga. But in this Manvantara, the Dwapar and Treta exchanges. Yes. So okay. the Dwapar becomes third, and Treta becomes second. This is a special okay. Manvantara system, which uh, where this is applicable. Otherwise, Dwapar is always the second, Treta is always the third, and then okay. comes Kali Yuga, of course. So in these four Yugas, there are different ways of Dharma actually. Yes, which means. There are different ways of remedies and different ways of obtaining spiritual perfection. So, if suppose you were an astrologer in Satya Yuga, then probably you would not suggest the remedies which you give now. <laughs> yes, because that time the Yuga Dharma was different. Yuga Dharma means the Dharma for the Yuga, that specific time period. So in Satya okay. Yuga, so in Satya Yuga, the Dharma was pertaining to meditation yes and austerities because people had very strong physical bodies they could live very long yes but that is not possible now yes you cannot tell a person then go and meditate for 10 years in the himalayas the person can't do, do that so then the person will say oh i don't want to do any meditation i will not come to this session only <laughs> mm -hmm. Then in Dwapar Yuga, if you take the second Yuga, the Yuga Dharma which was there was of doing Yagyas. Yes, okay. Yagyas means doing fire sacrifices. But that is okay. also not possible in Kali Yuga. Because if you read the Valmiki Ramayana, you will hear descriptions of this Yagyas which were performed. Miles and miles were the, those places. Na? The, the mm -hmm. Yagya Kund mm -hmm. as they say. Na? The fire was yes. so huge. It was like the diameter and the circumference, whatever you call it. It was in mm. miles actually. Here, mm. how will you do it? It's not possible. We can't even light a small fire also these days. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, and then when it came to the third yuga, the Treta yuga, it was worshipping the form of God, which is called Archa Vigraha, DT worship. Yes. So that was the way uh, primarily dharma was practiced. But nowadays in Kali Yuga, the problem is that also you can't do properly because mm. uh, people, because it is said when you are doing DT worship, you, your mental cleanliness is very much required so it is said in some sampradayas i know that if you are worshiping a, a deity and if you get a negative thought a thought about lust or something like that you are supposed to fast the whole day so you are not supposed okay. to eat that day <laughs> okay. okay so these are very strict uh, rules and ways in the earlier ages but if you read the shrimad bhagavatam there is one shloka where uh, it is said that uh, the Sukhdev Goswami tells to Parikshit Maharaj that Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan Asti Hi Ekan Mahat Guna Kirtana Deva Krishnasya Mukta Sangha Param Rajit. It means Sukhdev Goswami, the author of the Bhagavatam, is telling to Parikshit Maharaj that Kaler Dosha Nidhe Rajan means there are unlimited faults in this Kali Yuga. Too many faults. <laughs> Corruption, rape, abuse, so many problems are there. But he says, Asti hi ekan mahat guna, that there is one great quality. Mahat guna, mahat guna means great quality is there. The people may be thinking, oh, but Kali Yuga was supposed to be bad, right? How is there some great quality in Kali Yuga? Everybody says Kali Yuga is terrible, Kali Yuga is the end of the world, right? But then he says, Kirtana Deva Krishnasya Mukta Sangha Param Raja, that whatever uh, results you would have got in the other ages by doing meditation 
or by doing DT worship or by doing fire sacrifices that can be achieved in this age simply by doing Kirtan. What is Kirtan? Kirtan is basically glorifying God. Yes, that we sing the prayers. Yes. So uh, mantras is the age of uh, is the way for the deliverance in this age. So when we do the mantras properly, then whatever can be our karma. Yes, that there is a count which has been made in somewhere in the universe we may not know but there's a database which has been maintained that we need to uh, where uh, our count is made that oh now this person has started chanting these mantras and in fact uh, because this topic has come i would like to say something very practical here uh, recently uh, there was one lady two two weeks back who she contacted me and then she said that oh she's having difficulty in sleeping or some other problem was there then I just suggested her that you just chant this mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This mantra just because this is the remedy for the fourth house. Yes, because sleep is basically what problem in the fourth house, right? And it is linked with the twelfth house. And twelfth yes. house, and then eighth house shows how you get up. So if your heart is having some problem, which is fourth house, twelfth house is having a problem, eighth house is having a problem. Yes. So because four, eight, twelve other times. So then what happened? She told me, <laughs> I was amazed to know this, that she said she was not able to sleep from so many months and years. But suddenly the, from that very day itself, ne that day night itself when she started chanting, she could sleep very peacefully. And not only that, she had a cat, okay, <laughs> that pet who always mm. used to be very angry, very frustrated, very agitated. Mm. Yes. Mm. Who, whoever mm. would come, the cat would go and attack. Yes. Okay. But that cat also that cat also became very humble very quiet and the cat also the behavior of the cat changed entirely so this lady had sent me the message in whatsapp and i had put that as a testimonial also in my website for mm. people to see mm. so now uh, another thing i have seen is uh, it, it is very important that you also have certain combinations as recently james baha sir came to my channel so in that yes. he was telling, yes. if somebody has an afflicted ninth house or or in my experience, I have seen more than the ninth house, a bad Jupiter. Yes, it is very difficult that this person, these people will get remedies. And even if they get, they will continue doing it. Oh, that's another question. So recently I had done a consultation for a person who had Jupiter in Capricorn, which is the sign of debility. So uh, then I was trying my best to help that person, give all the remedies, all the mantras. But that person was always skeptical. Oh, will this work? And I'm like, first you do it, man. <laughs> then we will see it works or not. If you don't, if you don't do only, then how do you claim this works or not? Okay. And now somebody will say, oh, uh, but uh, for everybody, it doesn't happen like that. Yes, because there are many people who tell me, oh, after six months only, this mantra started giving me results. Okay, it didn't happen the next day. Well, the answer is very simple. As I was recording a video today morning, in that I was telling, we don't know how much sin we have performed. In Hindi, if I say, na, humne kitna paap kya hai, hume nahi pata. So, so if we expect that, uh, okay, we are chanting a mantra from today, and then from tomorrow, uh, the results will come. So, that cannot happen. Yes. So, we need to be patient, and we have to uh, adhere to the proper systems of the mantras, and, and so many remedies are there. No? So then accordingly, uh, we will realize that uh, th there are some things which we cannot change, which means after we chant the mantras, we do the remedies, we can still be in difficulty, we can still be in trouble. And that's perfectly fine. Yes, that is something which is beyond our control. Because Lord Krishna says that you do your karma, don't focus on the results. Okay, so our duty is we do the remedies, we do whatever it takes, and we may maintain a good lifestyle. And then after that whatever happens you call that fate or destiny let that happen because if we get too much into this jugglery of fate versus destiny and uh, this free will which many people go into unnecessarily because if you read the scriptures uh, you would be surprised actually very less places there are these uh, questions about uh, is this destined or is this not destined yes because in the scriptures the focus is on our duty that is why the ninth house is different from the tenth house people say oh ninth house is dharma tenth house is karma but people actually don't know what's the difference yes ninth house deals with dharma but it is also the house of god so that means god is the 
top priority who, who should be there at the number one priority of the list because dharma the word dharma refers it has many meanings but the word dharma comes from dhariyate which means that uh, as in sanskrit or hindi they say na jo dharan karta hai which holds yes so dharma is what basically intrinsic quality so the dharma the dharma of sugar is it is sweet <laughs> the dharma of milk is it is white yes so yes Uh, the eternal constituent position of a living entity, as the Bhagavatam says, that is to worship God. So that is why dharma also comes in the ninth house. Dharma does not come in the seventh house. <laughs> Then Parashara would have said, "Oh, seventh house is the house of dharma. That that means you become a servant servant of your uh, husband or wife. It doesn't happen like that." Parashara says, "Dharma is in the ninth house. So that means." Whenever you bring dharma, it has to be pertaining to the ninth house. So if you read the Ramayana also. when sita was uh, taken away by ravan yes lord ram did not say oh anyways you know, it's my destiny i have mars in seventh house what can i do <laughs> yes he has mars he has an exalted mars in the seventh house he could have always said now oh anyways that's that's my destiny you can't do anything but he did do like that he went and he fought ravan and he brought sita back so the important thing is uh, let's do what we are supposed to do as a duty and then let us also do the remedies and after that whatever happens let us take it as a blessing of the gods as the universe because sometimes what happens there are certain things which we need to go through to learn some lessons yes because without learning those lessons we will still go and harm other people so it is important sometimes that even after doing remedies things may not work out for us so then we should take it as a good sign from the universe that we need to learn those lessons yes and if god wills then maybe without learning those lessons also the karma can be washed off but that can happen remedies have the power to alter things and that is very true otherwise nobody would uh, speak about remedy so that is all i have to say for this question <laughs> so fantastic that's a excellent explanation so what you essentially saying is there is fate and there is free will use your free will to do the right things Yes. Okay. Do, do your do your duty, but fate is what will decide uh, the outcome of your actions. You have to perform your actions, but you cannot control the outcome. So you have yes. to do what you have to do. That's excellent. One of my teachers, Baba Ji, taught me that if Jupiter is either the either Jupiter or the ninth lord is placed in the lagna, you. don't need to pray or you don't need any remedies <laughs> then he said if either jupiter or the ninth lord aspects the lagna then if you do the remedies it will work oh and he said if neither jupiter nor the ninth lord is either in the lagna or aspecting the lagna no matter what remedies you do it won't work <laughs> okay <laughs> so you know that is what he taught and he also taught me you cannot drink a glass of water unless it is fated yes so anyway that's a different school of thought yes. but you know that is what i learned in kp astrology that you know unless the planets allow you or unless your fate allows you to do something it is very difficult to do it but i completely agree with your uh, with your explanation that there is fate there is free will both exist in a in the same plane and you've got to do what you've got to do yes. the outcome is not within your control yes yeah that is very important because even if you read the mahabharat na the pandavas they were sent to exile for 14 years but uh, they did not say there that oh anyways uh, our uh, anyways that's our destiny yes yudhishthir maharaj could have said that but he didn't say like that yudhishthir maharaj always focused on oh what is my duty and in fact there is a place in the mahabharat where the pandavas i mean the other four brothers they go to yudhishthir and say that oh in the scriptures there is a pro, uh, there's a possibility in the scriptures they say that uh, sometimes uh, 13 years or 12 years can be considered i mean 12 days can be considered as 12 years okay mm. so uh, now it is 12 13 days of our vanvas which has started so now let us go and kill the call of us then you just said no you cannot twist the uh, principles of the scriptures just for your own personal sake i will not do that if you want to go you fight but i will not be fighting with you yes i mean i will not go along with you when you fight so uh, yudhishthir maharaj is the perfect example do what you are supposed to do 
and then let krishna take care of the rest <laughs> and that's what happened ultimately the pandavas were victorious so that's the biggest lesson of the mahabharata and it is not that they did not suffer casualties abhimanyu was killed yes that was such a big casualty but ultimately they were victorious so that's the important thing so baba ji if somebody has to consult you yeah how can they get in touch with you yeah i have my website vedic renaissance so uh, but it's still uh, in week so uh, maybe you can paste the link below in the description okay so, uh, that, that i'll do okay yes. okay so they can uh, get to you via via your website yes 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 you can directly click and you will see the services page whichever is uh, comfortable for you you can approach me like that I, i i see from your side that it's not just uh, predictive consultations you do but you also do some kind of counseling is that right yes yes so basically when uh, i do the full consultation which is for one hour for example so then i am not like uh, some other astrologer who will say oh your lagna is in scorpio this will happen that will happen no that is the last thing i will see <laughs> the first thing i will see is oh uh, what's the situation of the person is 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 he able to get up in the morning properly is he eating properly yes is, is the person able to sleep properly because what is the use of suggesting remedies to a person if the person is not sleeping remedy at 5 am if he is not able to get up at 5 am yeah That's so right. yeah so then then that doesn't make much sense although then what happens is you can become a person who will become very rich yes because then the person will keep coming to you again and again <laughs> so i don't want that i want that if somebody has come to me once then he should he or she should never ever have the need to go to somebody else now some problem is there then you come that separate but for the same problem i feel that the person should not should not feel the need to go to somebody else and if the person does that then i will feel that i have uh, failed as a uh, counselor or as a guide <laughs> fantastic now baba ji i have more questions and yeah. uh, my second question to you yes is on planetary debilitation 